Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and it's time once again for your weekly wrap up. This is our channel update show and I've got some announcements coming up a little bit later. Last week we looked at a whole bunch of stuff like we usually do. We took a look at the new analog FPGA cores. This allows for you now to run Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Master System, Game Gear, and the Neo Geo without the need for cartridges. And just the other day, they updated the Neo Geo core. So I've got a video short in the playlist that you'll see on screen here so you can see that running. I was having trouble getting it to work when I was doing the initial video, but like everything in this open source world, things get fixed pretty quick. And that is exactly what happened with the Neo Geo core and things are working really nice on it now. We also looked at the Unihertz TikTok phone. This is a ruggedized Android phone from Unihertz. They make a lot of niche devices and this is kind of a more general one for them. But the back of the phone has a clock on it that can also do other things. It's a second screen on the rear portion of the phone and you can check out the review and see how it all comes together. And then we interviewed the Antenna Man who's very well known for those of us who are trying to cut the cord. And this turned out to be a really great interview. First of all, because he's so knowledgeable and honest about how he produces his content, which is great, especially because he is out to inform before he tries to profit. And I think that's an important thing. And he's got a great service that helps people get antennas hooked up on their homes. And this turned out to be one of the best videos I've posted in the last week or two insofar as views and interest are concerned. And that's no surprise because I know a lot of people subscribe to me for cord cutting content. And of course, when you have the king of cord cutters on the channel, that will certainly attract viewership. And I really enjoy doing interviews. And unfortunately, interviews don't seem to do as well here on the channel, but I've got a lot of them. So you may wanna check out a few that you missed. We interviewed Bob from Retro RGB about a year or so ago. We also had Major Nelson from Xbox on not all that long ago as well. And I always like to bring on my friends to do these kinds of interviews. So if you want to have me interview somebody that you think might be of interest to the audience here, let me know down in the comment section. Now let's move on to announcements. I will be over at Retro World Expo in Hartford, Connecticut. This is the annual retro game uh, convention that happens at the Connecticut Convention Center. It is a really fun show. There's a lot of great panels, a lot of guests from many of the retro game channels you're likely already watching, and you'll probably meet some new retro game YouTubers there as well. I'm gonna be there on August 27th because the next day I'm going to be heading off somewhere, which I'll talk about in a second, but I will be doing a panel at Retro World Expo and then I'll be kind of just wandering around. So definitely say hello if you are going to be there. Again, it's a really fun show if you're into retro video games, a lot of cool merchants, just a lot of fun stuff if you are into that sort of thing. And then the big announcement is that the next day, I am gonna get on a plane and head down to the launch of the Space Launch System or SLS rocket. It is going to send an uncrewed capsule to the moon and back, and that's gonna launch on August 29th. We got press credentials to head down there, and we'll be able to see the launch fairly close up. And I think I'll kind of do like a dispatch of what it's like to cover one of these things, because of course NASA is gonna have the best footage, but I wanted to just give you a sense as to what it's like down at the Space Center when one of these things launches. Now they're gonna be having us, and I think a lot of other members of the press at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station there, not on the grounds of the NASA press site where we usually go for this. And I think it's because of just how much explosive power is in this rocket. I'm not sure if uh, the other members of the press that have greater audiences will be closer. I'll try to find out, um, but it will be really cool nonetheless to get as close as we possibly can uh, to the launch of this mammoth rocket that will be going to the moon. The next time it launches, there will be a crew on board. This will likely be next year, depending on the success of this mission. I don't believe they're going to be landing on the moon, but they will basically go to the moon orbit and come back. So they're going to be inching their way towards the moon. And in that video, we'll talk about all the infrastructure that's going to be uh, put up into orbit, both around the Earth, the moon, and a Lagrange point in between to make a permanent base on the moon, which is really exciting. So we're gonna see the first steps at NASA on August 29th, and I'll get a video up as soon as everything happens. Now, what happens with these launches is that 
things never go to plan insofar as launching on the date they think it will. So right now it's scheduled for the 29th, but it might slip if they run into trouble when they start doing all of their initial testing. But stay tuned, we're gonna have a lot of fun with this. And I got a travel sponsor for this trip, Avello Airlines. You may not have heard of them, but they are a new startup. They fly 737s all over the east and west coast right now, and they're very convenient for me for a couple of reasons. One, they fly out of New Haven, Connecticut, in fact, the airport is smaller than the planes are, but Avello's got a bunch of jets there now, and they are very inexpensive, and they are very convenient for me because the airport's only about 25 minutes from my house here, and it's really quick and easy to get on the plane and go. And you can see all the destinations they're flying to, and they're adding more and more destinations constantly. Again, very, very affordable. And they're asking people to sign up on their Instagram page because they're giving away tickets on a quite regular basis. So check them out at lon.tv slash Avello, and that will take you to the Instagram page where you can learn more about our travel sponsor. And we'll give them a nice mention when we're down there in Florida. What's also nice is that you can change your ticket without a fee. And that was an important reason why I was looking to them to head down to Florida because the dates change constantly. So let's take a look at what's going to happen the next two weeks on the channel because I will not be able to do a wrap up next week with all the stuff going on here. Uh, so the first thing is that we're going to be looking at a Lenovo Slim 7 Pro X laptop. This is powered by a new Ryzen 6900HS processor. This is the first 6000 series Ryzen I have looked at and it has an NVIDIA 3050 GPU inside of it. So you've got kind of the best of both worlds here. This is it right here, uh, currently powered down after its big review that I worked on a couple of days ago. And what I did in the review is I looked at the performance graphically of the Ryzen processor compared to the 3050. So you'll get a feel for what these new Ryzen chips can do. And it's pretty impressive, uh, but I think you still might want a GPU in a number of circumstances. I also got in this really fun uh, little kit here. This is the Harmony Encore cartridge. It is a flash cartridge for the Atari 2600. And I did a short video the other day, which you'll find in the playlist, of a uh, Atari 2600 that I bought on Whatnot that was AV modded so I can hook it up to a modern television without too much effort. So we're gonna have a live stream and a review of the Harmony Encore cartridge because there is some value, I think, to playing Atari games on the original hardware because you have those switches that some of the games require. And we'll take a look at that uh, hopefully before I head out on my trip. I also just shot a review of this Vision Tech USB-C dock. Nothing exciting here, but it's kind of a nice all-rounder because it works well as a travel dock, but also a desktop dock. I know a lot of you have been using kind of travel docks as a desktop dock, but this one might actually work well for both of those situations. It supports 100 watts of power. It also can do two 4K60 display outputs, provided your computer supports it, and it's got Ethernet built in too, so all good stuff there. And then we're gonna take a look at this new WD drive. This is the P40, and I've got it here on the desk with me. Uh, this is kind of in their gaming line of drives, and it performs pretty well, and it's got an RGB thing on it that you can change the colors on or coordinate with your uh, other RGB apps from Razer and Asus and a few others. We'll take a closer look at this drive and its performance uh, coming up in the next couple of days. They have a cool control panel that you can run with it also. And then we're gonna play around more with TV antennas. I picked this huge antenna up. I figured, you know what, let's just go for the gusto and see what happens. Unfortunately, I did not get as much of a result as I was hoping for with this, but I think I'll talk about uh, why you may not always need the biggest antenna and why there might be other factors coming into play when it comes to picking up over-the-air television. So this video, I think, will be more of a talker than a shower because there isn't much to show here, but I did learn a lot, and I wanted to share what I learned uh, in the course of this. And this also kind of uh, backs up into the interview we did with the Antenna Man because just buying the biggest and most expensive is not always going to solve your problem. And in many cases, something smaller might actually work just as good. So stay tuned for that. We'll have a little bit more on that antenna if I can get time for it. Uh, also, I've got the new Spectre X360 ready to get 
uh, reviewed here. This is from HP. This is an Intel powered two in one and Jake who helps me out here on the channel did some work on this and said it's pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. And then, <laughs> I don't know what order these things are going to appear, but these are all the things on the front burner here. I got in a phone from Unihertz, the same company that made the phone we looked at last week. This one is called the Atom XL, and it's a little phone, about four inches, that has not only a smartphone built into it, but also a walkie-talkie built into it that works over the 400 megahertz, 70 centimeter band. Now you need an amateur radio license to use much of that band, but if you're in the US, it does work over the FRS frequencies and it can transmit at two watts. It'll do analog, but it also supports the DMR standard. So this might be of interest to people that are outdoorsy and want to be able to uh, use their smartphone both to make calls, but also just to communicate over traditional radio waves. And I think amateur radio operators might find this really interesting. And we'll see exactly what you can do with this walkie-talkie in addition to seeing how the phone works as a phone. And that will be coming up very soon also. I think this phone might actually be at my mailbox uh, down the street right now. So I'll probably run out and grab a cup of coffee and see if it's there. So I'm really looking forward to playing around with this because it kind of checks all my boxes right now. Amateur radio, smartphones, Android, you name it, it's got it. And then also on the list is doing a Mocha overview. And one of the things that I'm getting from people who watch the channel is a lot of confusion about how Mocha works. Now, if you're not familiar with Mocha, it is a technology that allows you to extend your network over your existing cable coax wire. But I've been hearing from a lot of viewers who are confused about how the coax wiring works, especially if they have an existing cable TV or internet subscription from a cable provider. And I think it's a matter of getting your head around how the coax cable can support multiple things over the same wire. And that's not something I've really explained very well in any of my other videos. And I'm getting a lot of the same question in, and that tells me I need to do something to help answer that question because nobody seems to be answering it right now in the great search engine that YouTube and Google run. So we are going to talk about that at some point over the next two weeks. And let me know if you have specific things you'd like covered in that video because that'll really help inform what we're going to do here. So it's going to be a very busy next two weeks. I'm not sure I'm going to get to all of this stuff, but I wanted to compile a list of things that I want to try to squeeze in in between uh, the NASA trip and the Retro World Expo. And then I'm taking a couple of days off for some family time too. So we've got a lot going on here as the summer winds down and the fall begins. And if there's anything you would like to see that was not on the list here, definitely let me know down below in the comment stream. Now this week's wrap up as always is being brought to you by all of you. And we have three new supporters on the channel to thank. Asia Rola is joining us via Floatplane. I hope I got your name correct there. Jenna Lynn Logan and Grayson Petty contributed via the YouTube membership program. And I want to thank everyone who contributed this week and everyone who's been contributing on an ongoing basis and all of you who watch on a regular basis too because all of those things equal channel growth. And if you would like to support the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv support and make a monthly or a one-time contribution through my donor box page. But we also support Floatplane, as you saw earlier, Patreon, and the YouTube membership program. We have other channels that you can find me on, including my extras channel for unboxings and supplementary content. I also still have the podcast feed where when we do an interview, we'll put that up in audio form. And the interview with the Antenna Man just went live on my podcast today. And then, of course, we have the Amazon page at lon.tv slash Amazon shop where you can watch a lot of my content ad-free. There's some other ways to engage with the channel, including my weekly and daily email list. You can find the weekly one at lon.tv slash email and the daily one at lon.tv slash digest. We also have the Facebook group, the Discord, and the Telegram. And then we have my store where I sell previously reviewed items for prices lower than new. These are typically the items that I bought for review here on the channel and I'm now getting rid of. And if you want to get notified whenever we add something to the store, you can sign up at lon.tv slash store alert. And I'm also going to be doing some more of those whatnot auctions, including cost of shipping giveaways for items that were provided to the channel free of charge. So sign up on that list at lon.tv slash store alert so you can be notified of new store items, but also when we're going to do some of these whatnot 
auctions, which are always fun uh, for all of us who tune in and participate. That is going to do it for this week's weekly wrap up, a longer one here, but there's a lot going on in the channel that I wanted to let you all know about. I'm always open for more ideas. In fact, that little smartphone with this with the walkie-talkie built in came from a viewer request. So let me know what you want to see down in the comments below and I'll do my best to make a video about it. The next couple of weeks will be a little crazy with all the different scheduling things I'm kind of working through here, but we will be back to a normal cadence once we get into September, but there'll be lots of cool stuff to see while we go through this chaotic couple of weeks here. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.